Ladies and gentlemen, Little Steven, welcome to Tele Regione Toscana. Wonderful. What is your special relation, your special link with the Hard Rock Cafe? The Hard Rock Cafe um, was the very first sponsor of my radio show, Little Steven's Underground Garage. We started 15 years ago, and um, nobody wanted the show. They said it was impossible to play all 60 years of rock and roll, but we felt we could do it. So uh, the Hard Rock uh, came in and got us on the first 20 stations, and now we're in over 140 stations in America and 100 countries. So the Disciples of Souls are back. Tomorrow night you're going to play in Pistoia and uh, European tour, a new album. So 35 years after the debut album. So how happened all that? Nostalgia? Well, <laughs> It wasn't planned. Uh, circumstance, I was invited to uh, play a blues festival in London, October, and uh, I said, well, why not, you know, put a band together, and it was the first time I revisited my songs, you know, in all those years. I didn't really uh, expect to have them hold up so well, you know, they were very relevant today. The the style of them had become even more unique through the years, you know? I really appreciated them in a different way. So, felt like an album, went home. We did an album in between the European tour and uh, the Australian tour. Picked the songs that I had written for other people. I wasn't ready to write a whole new album, you know? So I, I picked the songs that meant the most to me. And then there's some things that I've never done. Some cover songs, some uh, rootsy things that uh, show where I'm coming from, you know. And it turned out good, turned out very good. Hello, my first question is about uh, Soul Fire. Soul Fire is a bridge from the past for the future. Is, uh, is it correct? That's one way to look at it. Yes, yeah. yes. It's uh, where the soul, yeah. where, where we live, you know, inside. Yeah. And it's what connects us all together. Way deep down, we are all connected in that passion. This was the first album I've ever done that was not political. So I thought a little bit of philosophy to open the record, but that's all. The rest is all about the music for the first time, you know? I wanted the music to be featured and uh, the arrangements and uh, the production and uh, so I, I did songs that I've written for other people, and even did a couple of cover songs, uh, James Brown and uh, Eddie James, and uh, included some roots, which I've never done before, like some doo-wop, some blues, and uh, my tributes to some cinematic uh, genres, like uh, black exploitation, and also uh, Ennio Morricone, you know, a little bit of a tribute to him. So it was a nice way of reintroducing myself, you know? With just a little bit of the philosophical overview of the title track, you know. But the rest is more or less just about the music. But why 20 years? I, 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 I started acting, you know, and it was a, it was a new craft to learn. And uh, very exciting. It was a gift by David Chase, the creator of Sopranos. To, you know, a, a, a gift to give me a new craft. And then it turned into multiple crafts with, with Lilyhammer. I started writing for TV, producing TV. I directed the final episode, uh, doing the score. But at the same time, Bruce puts the band back together. And then, and then at the same time as I'm learning this new craft and multiple crafts, Bruce starts touring again with the E Street Band. And what was really strange Every time we go out, we get bigger. We're bigger now than in the 80s, you know? And so between, uh, you know, I'm learning a new thing with the acting and Bruce is touring, and 20 years went by like that, I don't know. It's a flash. Yeah. Let me ask you something. You, you have always been very politically conscient and, and involved. 
Um, this album comes in the same period of a new president in the USA, a very controversial situation. Did this fact inspire you in a particular way? It was coincidental, honestly. Uh, I did not plan it, but when I started to decide, okay, I'm going to make a new album, what should I do? You know, I thought, you know, this is a good opportunity because I don't feel the need to be political right now. It's really obvious what's going on to me. And no, uh, I don't have to explain anything. Let's let, let the politics lie for a moment. Let the, let whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And I will use this opportunity to really focus on myself as a musician, arranger, producer, songwriter. And I never did that before. You know, it was always about the politics, everything. You know, the music followed the politics. Yeah. The first time now, the music is the is first. You know, so it, maybe it's maybe it's the only one that's going to be like this. I don't know. We'll happen. We'll see what happens in the future. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna stay back. I'm gonna continue to make new albums and uh, get my head back into writing again. So where I will go, I don't know. To tell you the truth, but I I was very political back then because it, I needed to be. Nobody else was doing it, you know? Now it's more a natural part of our business, you know? I made a point back then to be very extreme so I could politicize all my friends. I wanted to politicize my friends, I wanted to politicize the business, and I, and I think I succeeded. Uh, now it's more accepted, you know? People can talk about issues without making it a big deal, you know? And that's good, that's healthy, you know? But so now I think the pressure is not so much uh, uh, on me. Listen, you, you lived the, the golden era of rock music and rock and roll, first as a listener and then as a musician. Uh, do you sometimes feel a sentiment of nostalgia? You know, I do, I feel the, 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 the nostalgia, the nostalgia comes from what we had accessible to us seven or eight rock and roll TV shows on every week. How do you not feel nostalgic for that? You know, I mean, seven or eight rock and roll TV shows on every week, okay? You know, you have to be a little nostalgic for that. But musically, I don't feel nostalgic. I, you live the present. I, I, I mean, I don't feel nostalgic about the 60s. I never left the 60s, okay? I'm That's still fine. there, I'm, I'm still there, you know? And I feel that the music that we present, you know, whether it's old or whether it's new, is just as inspiring and motivating as it is, as it was back then, you know? I really feel that. And I get the emails from young people saying, you know, where did you find this uh, guy, Eddie Cochran, you know? Where did you, where, 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 where did you discover this group, The Animals, you, you know? You know, strange you know, because it's new to them. Need to be teached. Well, it's it need to be accessible. Uh, whether they get there or not is up to them. You know, I'm not I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. But it's there if they want it. You know, and most young people, they go through pop. You know, they listen to all the pop music, but then they get to a certain age. They want some, they want some substance, huh? They want some some meat, some meat on the bones, huh? And then all of a sudden they discover The Doors or Led Zeppelin or Bruce Springsteen or, you know, or this or that. And they were like, wow, what is this? And they're going to get the same nourishment from that art that we got. Why not? Art is wonderful that way. It's forever, man, you know? Last question, okay, Terry. The last question is about uh, your Italian bloods. Okay, your grandmother from Naples is correct. Your grandfather <laughs> from Reggio Calabria, La Mezia. But pay attention because around La Mezia term, Reggio Calabria, pay attention. Bon Jovi, Bon Giovanni, Bruce Springsteen, Zirilli, Steven Tyler, Steven Talarico. It's the same ground. Do you know this? Same neighborhood? Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic land, not only pizza, mandolino, mafia and so on, it's, like, it's, a, it's energetic. It's, it's the Mississippi Delta of Italy. More, more. <laughs> He's saying that rock and roll is not American, but no. it's Italian. No, no, it's, it's ah. a Magna Grecia. 
He's the uh, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, his guest here. You know, salute. Salute. <laughs>